In this chapter, we're going to explore how to set up and configure the internal and external connections required for both audio and MIDI. Let's begin with the map of the system, and then I'll show you how to connect them together. The major external system components are a computer with a valid USB e licensor, the audio interface. For this video, we'll be using the Steinberg MR816X, monitor speakers and headphones, input devices like microphones and instruments, a MIDI interface, a MIDI input device like a keyboard, cables, and power. Follow the manufacturer's instructions to connect the amps, speaker, headphones, and instruments. Connect the interface to the computer by USB or Firewire as appropriate. Turn on the interface and then the computer. Make sure you have the latest drivers for your interface. Even if your interface came with a CD of drivers, you should check the website for any updates and download them if needed. Now we're ready to launch Cubase and begin setting up the internal connections. To do this, open the Device menu and select Device Setup. This dialog box is where you control all of the connections between Cubase and external hardware. On the left side of the screen, you can select what device you want to configure, such as MIDI, remotes, video, etc. For this video, we're going to configure devices for MIDI and audio. The right side of the screen is where you adjust the settings. Let's set up our MIDI interface by selecting All MIDI Inputs. Next, we'll designate which MIDI ports we want Cubase to use. MIDI output is used if you're controlling external instruments and devices. We'll leave that alone for now. You can also choose which ports to show or hide. By hiding items you don't use, the MIDI input menu in the inspector is streamlined. Next, we're going to move to the VST audio device. Before we go any further, let's explain three terms. ASIO, VST, and Latency. ASIO stands for Audio Stream Input Output. ASIO is a digital audio protocol designed by Steinberg that allows for extremely high speed and high fidelity by connecting an application like Cubase directly to the sound card. This direct high-speed communication with the sound card makes it possible to process multiple high-quality channels at one time. VST stands for Virtual Studio Technology and is another Steinberg innovation. VST allows for the seamless integration of software, plugins, and hardware. It also allows for connections that mimic a traditional recording studio. VST connections are what link all parts of the Cubase environment together. Latency is the short period of time, usually milliseconds, that it takes for an audio signal to be processed by a digital system. Latency results from analog to digital conversion, buffering, and signal processing. The more processing you apply to a signal, the more latency you will introduce. Latency is a primary factor when recording live audio. If the latency value is too large, the performer will hear a delay similar to an echo between the time they play a note and when they hear it in their monitors. Let's return to the VST Audio Device Setup page and look at ways to control latency as we finish configuring our device. You select the ASO driver of your audio interface here. I'll pick the Yamaha Firewire device, which is the MR816. Below it, Cubase tells you how much latency the driver will introduce while processing the incoming signal. Anything above about 5 milliseconds will become noticeable. We can reduce latency by reducing the interface's buffer or working memory. However, if you set the buffer size too low, you risk introducing pops and clicks. The specifications of your computer will determine how low you can get without problems. On the other hand, when you're mixing, we recommend you set the buffer size to a larger value to get the best performance out of your computer. 
The better way to eliminate latency is by using direct monitoring, if your interface supports it. Direct monitoring sends the live signal back to the musician directly from the interface before processing, so no latency is introduced at all. We now have the MIDI and audio devices configured. Let's look at how to set up the various connections within Cubase so we can begin to record. Open the Device menu and find VST Connections. VST Connections is the control center for all of your routing. Use the tabs at the top to select which family of connections you want to work with. Let's start with Inputs. You'll see the word bus used a lot in Cubase. Using buses may sound confusing, but they're really straightforward. Just like a real bus picks up people at a station and can drop them at any of several locations along a route, an audio bus takes a signal from one source and makes it available to any destination. So when we set up an input bus, we're creating a route within Cubase for the incoming signal. That signal can then use any destination along its route. This means an incoming signal can be routed to one track, several tracks, a combination of tracks and devices, and so forth. By using buses, Cubase can use a small number of inputs to connect to a virtually unlimited number of tracks. Let's create two input buses so we can record a guitar and a voice at the same time on separate channels. Click Add Bus. Select what configuration you want to use and how many. Let's keep things simple and just add two mono buses for now. Now we can name the buses. These names will be displayed in the track inspector and on the mixer to help you identify signal routing. And we can choose which physical input you want to use on the interface. You can save this configuration as a preset. This will help re-establish your connections quickly if your interface goes offline. You can also define a default input to be used anytime you create a new audio track. Now, let's configure the output bus. We'll look at how to connect external FX and instruments and the Studio tab in later chapters. We should be fully connected. Let's move on to Chapter 3 and start recording.